I cannot believe I'm saying this, but the Nissan Titan pickup truck is no more. That's right, after 2024, we will not be seeing another one. And in this video, we're gonna be covering the top five reasons why we're going to miss it, but also the top five reasons why it failed. But in addition, we're also going to add in the history of the truck. Yes, so how about we start with the top five reasons why we're sad, because it's a great truck. That's right. All right, let's start with number five on our list. Why is it or was it such a great truck? And that goes all the way back to 2001 when Nissan brought out the Alpha T concept, which you see behind us. And the Alpha T concept was wild. It was sort of a Swiss army knife of trucks. It was completely different. And at the same time, it harked to something that was about to be built because a lot of that design became the Nissan Titan. Yeah, Nissan did so many things right, starting with that concept. It was wild, right? It had a movable bed floor, yep. like a tray bed. It had a fold-out tailgate that kind of harkens now to the tailgate wars of today. That's right. It had pillarless swing-out doors, suicide doors. Yeah, ultra-modern interior, a split-style sunroof. It was very different, but it was the outside design that really got people because it was super bold and futuristic and kind of an industrial look to it. And that translated very well, I think, to the first-generation Nissan Titan, which debuted in 2003 as a 2004 model. And I was lucky enough to actually see that vehicle shortly after it did debut in 2003, and I was blown away. Yeah, you were in New York, right? At the New York Auto Show. That is correct. Yeah, so just two years after that concept, bam, we have a production truck, and then they started building it in the US at Canton, Mississippi plant. Now, this is an interesting point about this truck. Nissan had to devote a lot of financial gravitas towards everything thrown out there. Let me put it to you another way. Nissan had to throw out tons of money because not only was this truck required to have its own line in order to be built, because it was completely different than everything else they built, but also the dealerships had to have all new bays to lift this heavy truck up. They had to expand ceilings and create larger lifts and everything else in order to service this truck. As such, Nissan had to invest a lot of money just to make this happen. Yep. And so n let's go to number four on our list now. Uh, great industry first features when it launched, right? Yep. So let's list a few of them. You mentioned the factory that they had to refurbish yep. and redo. Well, they introduced factory spray and bed liners that are commonplace now. That's right. That was one of the early adopters of spray and bed liners. Then they had a utility track tie down system in the back which in the bed, mm -hmm. which means you could put move cleats around all the way by the bulkhead on the sides and even in the floor to tie down your cargo. Once again, another early adopter for that technology. Then they had a little in bedside storage box that plopped open down behind the rear tire. That was really super cool and it was just enough space to put in maybe jumper cables or some other components in there. And at the time, very few people were doing anything like that. Yeah, they kind of modernized that kind of storage box concept. And then finally, in their extended cab, they called the King Cab, they had full swing out rear doors, which means they opened almost 180 degrees, making egress easier. Yeah, and for cargo layout, one of the cool things about that setup was it was always a good truck in terms of packaging, but by doing that, it allowed people really easy egress, and you could also put in large components and options and objects in there by opening this door way out, out of your way, unlike a lot of other trucks at the time that only opened partially. Yes, and uh, now let's move in to number three on our list. Number three is really great branding and marketing that Nissan did. Yeah, I mean, a lot of the names that they used on this truck still stick with us today. Yes. Let's start with the Endurance V8 engine. Endurance, right? That's a great... Every manufacturer of any vehicle, any engine, or any powertrain should name their powertrain. And, and many do. Don't get us wrong. Yes. We know that. But in this case, it was a smart thing to do because we remember it. And honestly, well, that engine is something that's kind of close to our hearts at the same time. 5.6 liters. First of all, great sounding engine. Mm -hmm. uh, we've driven, you and I, both 
some of the original Titans. Uh, I've, I've driven one recently, actually, that was a used truck that Brandon brought. Right. right? Well, let's start this up. I want to hear the V8. Okay. Can you hang out by the exhaust? Yeah, let's hear how it sounds. I don't even see the exhaust outlet. Someone might have cut it off. I think I see a muffler there. So I think they just cut off like the back pipe of it. So great tor uh, horsepower and torque. So it started with 305 horsepower and 379 pound-feet of torque. And then later they bumped up the torque a little bit. It was really torquey. It was really torquey and it was competitive with the big brands way back then. And that was something that you had to give it up to Nissan for. Exactly. Another brand name, uh, King Cab. It's actually, this transitioned from the Frontier hard body days, right? Oh, yeah. Actually, even before then, going way back to when Datsun was part of the name with Nissan pickups. So King Cab goes way back in terms of Nissan history. They had an automatic, five-speed automatic in the Titan truck. They, told, they called it Torque King. The Torque King. Automatic. <laughs> It's a, Come on. It's a really this, cool name. That one didn't stick as well as the Endurance name, but yeah. still, it was, it was a pretty cool name. Yeah, so really great branding and built in the USA. So originally, so the engine is built in Smyrna, the right. 5.6 liter gas V8, and the truck itself was built in, in Canton, Mississippi. So they were really trying to address those um, brand loyal customers from other manufacturers. That's right. Number two on our list, when the Titan was launched, it had a really almost class-leading towing and really great cab utility, especially in the crew cab. That's right. So 9,400 pounds of maximum towing. Which, in 2003. Exactly. In 2003 was not very common. So that was a great deal. And then in addition, it had an enormous amount of volume. 126 cubic feet of total volume in our crew cab. So we mentioned their extended cabs, right? But the crew cab is what we all love. So that's the most common, most popular configuration of truck right now. Pickup truck is a crew cab short bed and Nissan had it. That's right, they did. By the way, that extended cab setup they had, the king cab, that actually had really comfortable rear seats for a king cab style vehicle or an extra cab style vehicle. So I'm not dismissing that truck either. And here's another cool thing. Yeah. They had the sliding rear window, the big one. Mm -hmm. And that was actually used by an awful lot of people to haul extra large lumber pieces because you could stick it all the way through your vehicle, all the way back to the back of the bed and hold, I believe, up to nine feet. Yes, and they had another trick up their sleeve. Remember the front passenger seat back, fold it forward. Go, go in the front. Oh, can you fold it completely flat? Or almost flat? I think you were supposed to. Oh, oh wait, try, try it again. No. Nope. There's something preventing it. But from the factory, oh, oh there look. you go, look at that. And then you got like a little workbench. It's a table. Yeah, I like it. How cool is that? Yeah. So creating like a workspace or allowing long items to enter the cab. That's right, another early adopter for that type of tech. And number one reason why we're sad it's going away soon is value. It was always a good value. That's right, consider this. This is a truck that even back when it first came out really had just one version of it, which was a V8. Uh, yeah, later on, of course, there was a diesel. We'll get to that in a minute. But the whole point here is that you were able to get a very powerful truck right out of the box. And even right now, if you look at 2023 20, models, right? Let's look at the pricing. Uh -huh. So it starts with a King Cab, which is extended cab two-wheel drive V8 at $42,245. If you can figure a Ford F-150 with a similar engine, like mm. five liter, right. um, extended cab, super cab, and the same about uh, a version of the bed and the two-wheel drive model, it's over $43,000 on the Ford. And same thing with Chevy and Ram. For example, Silverado 1500, $43,435 for that V8 powered two-wheel drive extended cab version. That is correct. The reason why we don't have Toyota on this list is because technically speaking, they don't make a V8 anymore, so we're not really comparing it. Yes. What about the top five reasons why it's going away? Mm. 
Yeah, sorry to say, uh, there have been a lot of uh, mistakes made by Nissan We Feel over the years that have really led the Nissan Titan to its demise. And we have the top five right here. So number five on our list is brand loyalty. So let's explain what we mean, right? This was even confirmed by Nissan representatives themselves when they were launching the Titan. Right. They called it brand loyalty. What does that mean? It's, you know, a lot of Ford people are Ford people, <laughs> Ford truck people, mm -hmm. a lot of Chevrolet and GMC, you know, they're loyal to that brand. Right. And Dodge Ram and Ram people tend to gravitate to those vehicles. And they're called kind of domestic big three. Yep. Right. So Toyota Tundra and the Nissan Titan were viewed as outsiders trying to break into this market, right? That is correct. Now, here's the point about that. Conquest sales, in order to get somebody from one automaker and drag them into another Conquest sale, you really have to do something remarkable to make that happen. Every once in a while it does happen, and that's a big you know, feather in someone's cap. However, it's very, very difficult to do when you're talking about brand loyalty for half ton pickup trucks, which is the largest, most popular auto division in the United States, half ton trucks yeah, are and the way it, to go. And that history goes down deep into the many, many decades, right? It's like religion and football and everything else. It's yeah. huge. I mean, F series trucks are celebrating 75 years of their brand right, right. now. And we're talking about 20 years of Nissan Titan. Right, so those are the differences that you have to weigh. Right? Yep. In addition, we're also talking about just a huge amount of selection with those trucks in terms of what you're able to get versus Nissan with very few selections with their trucks. There were so many things that people were looking at with their big brands versus the small brand Nissan, it made it very difficult to compete. Number four on our list is lack of a halo model. This is actually not just Nissan sometimes struggled with this. Many manufacturers struggled with this. Right. Uh, what we're talking about is uh, the truck they showed in 2016. They called the Nissan Warrior Concept. And we've talked about this truck ad nauseum because we felt even when it came out that had Nissan built a version of this for you, in terms of just the overall looks, never mind the fact that it was built to be a serious off-road performing vehicle to go up against the Ford Raptor at the time, mm -hmm. it would have helped significantly with sales. Well, it's a vehicle that brings people into the showroom, right? Exactly. Because people, you know, it has, it's on the pedestal, right? Mm -hmm. it, the Warrior concept was a wide body concept. Had a lot of cues from that Raptor. Yep. You know, the amber lights you know, the wide fenders, all that goodness. Beefed up suspension, yeah. super long travel. It was a little bit taller, right? Yep. More ground clearance. So that's kind of the halo that brings people in. And then they see maybe a regular Titan or a regular Frontier, and they jump on, to, on top of that. Exactly, which is exactly what Ford did with their Raptor. And then later on, other people, you know. Ram TRX. Ram, Ram TRX is, you know, um, uh, did the same thing, modeled it after Ford. And Nissan had an opportunity, we feel, to have done the same thing, and they didn't, and it was a mistake opportunity. Yes, that's unfortunate. Uh, number three on our list, the Titan XD. So you're probably wondering, when are we going to talk about the XD? Oh. This is their not quite heavy duty, heavy duty truck. It really was supposed to fit between your half ton trucks and your heavy duty trucks. That was the space they were trying to inhabit. Honestly, a space that never really existed. Okay, and they also introduced the five liter Cummins V8. As part of this introduction. So in, so in 2016, this is a whole new generation of the Titan truck, which lasted from 2004 model year through 2015, which was Almost 12 years. Yeah. Uh, which I feel like is too long to begin with. It was a little long, and there were a lot of adjustments that were being made along the way. There were even some possibilities and rumors that they were going to be working with Ram at one point in time to build the next generation truck. Lots of things happened in that time, and I think that that stretched out the amount of time. In fact, uh, they said that at one point that they were going to discontinue the truck. Yes. And we saw those XD trucks testing. We mm -hmm. have prototype hunting uh, videos that we did right. about that truck. We went to the factory, in fact. Um, I went to Columbus, Indiana 
to see how that Cummins V8 was made. Right. Every, you can look at the engine and see there were decision after decision that we made to, to really improve NVH and make it a very sociable product for this market. We made the decision to go with a V8 because we were pretty much trying to go into the same space claim in these vehicles, in these large pickups and vans that I was talking about. Uh, and those, the, the space claim for an inline six just won't fit in the same space claim as a V8 or a V10. So it was a very deliberate decision for packaging. We've always followed the Titan along the way, right? Yeah. I, I brought my pistons. <laughs> so right here, this is the five liter V8 Cummins piston that I got at the factory tour. Uh, by the way, one thing that stood out to me um, at the Smyrna factory where the gas V8 is made, this is the gas piston, and also in, in um, Indiana, it's pride. Yep. Workers have a lot of pride. They certainly did. Now, over the years, we at TFL have driven just about every version of the Nissan Titan available, from off-roading versions, rare Nismo off-roading versions, to Pro 4X, and in addition, luxury versions of this truck, and we've driven a bunch of the XD models. In fact, Andre got a chance to ride in one of the rarest XD models I've ever heard of. Which is what? which is the regular cab long bed XD. Yes. I didn't even know this thing existed. So first of all, there are three seats here across. That's right. Just two of us here for now. But um, I think the main benefit of a regular cab, and correct me if I'm wrong, is first of all, the truck overall curb weight is lower. That's right. And that allows for more payload and more towing. Uh, what are the numbers? You're absolutely right. So uh, numbers are up from crew cabs. So now for single cab XD diesel, you have 12,640 foot pounds of, to or, I'm sorry, uh, pounds of pay uh, towing. Okay. And then for uh, payload, you have 2,400 pounds. Okay. What uh, about our gas V8? Gas V8 is almost 3,000 pounds. So it's 2,950 uh, you know, pounds. Okay. And this is an eight foot bed here. For single cab, the only uh, bed configuration will be the eight foot bed. Yes, so Nissan also, as part of this XD uh, Titan push, they had uh, created a regular cab because the big three have regular cabs. Yes, right? they do. And long bed versions. Mm -hmm. They also had a version of a king cab with no rear seats. Uh -huh. So you could put you know, your tools and any, any cargo back there. So they had really used basically every everything at their disposal to try to get that conquest sale, right? From the big three and others. Yeah, and they just couldn't make a dent in those because the bottom line is that the capability of the XD rarely trumped the capability of many half-ton trucks, yet you were spending so much more money to get that Cummins diesel. In addition, I mean, we know that the frame of the XD was beefier and it, had a lot of other components that the regular uh, Nissan Titan didn't have. However, regardless of that, it's just the amount of money and everything else that was needed in order to get the XD over the regular Titan just didn't make sense. Yeah, well, let's look at the um, diesel engine specs, right? right? 310 horsepower and 555 pound-feet of torque. Um, okay, yeah. so by itself, it sounds pretty reasonable. Yeah, that's pretty good. But consider this. I recently drove a 2003 Ram Heavy Duty mm -hmm. with almost identical specs. And we're talking about 2016 numbers versus 2003 numbers. Yeah. So even though, so the promise of that five liter was that it fit into where most V8 engines fit, yep. right? That it would be efficient, that would be fairly powerful. Yeah. But it actually didn't hit almost any of those criteria perfectly. No, it just kind of was, it just missed by a little bit. And in every category. In every category. Yeah. So it could never be completely, actually, it was never even remotely competitive with the heavy duty trucks out there. And at the same time, it was marginally effective against half ton trucks. So the extra expense. Now I know there were some benefits. I mean, better range and a lot of people swear by that five liter V8 uh, saying that, you know, it's super reliable and strong and everything else. But at the same time, considering how much you're spending on a heavy duty truck versus that XD, it just didn't make a lot of sense. Number two on our list is still lack of engine options and not so great MPG. That is just correct. across the board. So the Titan, much like the Tundra of the year, you know, when it began, was never a super efficient truck. Nope. Uh, we showed it. Yes. Then in the second generation, you know, 2016 and on, we had a 2018 long-term Titan. 
Yes, it was yellow, and we used the hell out of it. Yes, it's very visible, yellow, and it had a seven-speed automatic. You and I both have towed with that. Yes, we many have. times. And that seven-speed was never really happy. It was hunting for gears, and it was n never really efficient while towing. No, and that was the shocking part. I figured, compared to some people who were still building five speeds and whatnot back in the day, and even six speeds, I thought, oh, the seven speed, you know, maybe it has that, you know, extra overdrive or something like that that would really give it that. No, it, it just didn't. It was kind of hunting. It was. Yeah. It, it hunted all the time, and I towed a 2,200, 2,300 pound trailer with it, and it hunted a lot, even when I really wasn't pushing it that hard. So, it was a really good truck. Don't get me wrong. Super great with power and very comfortable, but that transmission kind of let it down. Exactly. And that's a big deal because mm -hmm. when efficiency is really important, you know, on the pocketbook, when you're filling up your truck, the Titan never truly delivered that next level efficiency. However, they did recently replace that with a nine speed automatic transmission, which did help a little bit. But number one on our list, why it failed or why it is failing in about a year is really the lack of class leading numbers yeah at the end of the day now remember the xd is gone it's been gone for a while uh the, the, the diesel, diesel one the diesel's yeah. been just is just not the round so if you look at the numbers that the truck produces yes you could argue that uh, a couple of years ago it did produce more horsepower than other uh, non-turbocharged <laughs> trucks that are out there non-supercharged trucks that are out there but honestly Really, other than a couple of little things, it just didn't outperform any of the competitors. Well, here is um, one of the, or a couple of numbers, right? So in 2016, when the XD launched, Nissan stated 2,500 pounds of maximum payload right. and 12,000 pounds of maximum towing. Those numbers by themselves, you know, they're just above the half ton segment. But if you look at like F-250, Silverado 2500 or Ram 2500 gas engine, trucks those numbers didn't match that no. at all so the case for the xd was kind of not very strong you know why get 2500 pounds of payload when you can get 3000 pounds of payload or more in the competitive truck in addition when they got rid of the diesel they still kept the regular v8 5.6 liter yeah. and but it was still an xd which meant that you had the beefed up frame underneath the truck but for the most part it was also very similar to a regular Nissan Titan, and I think that actually hurt sales even more for the XD. Yeah, and I think their styling, the most recent styling is amazing, right? They refreshed their interiors, and the new headlights, and new grills, and now for 2024, they have the new bronze package, bronze it, edition. It does look really good with the bronze edition, but, it, and I, although we do agree on most things, I would say that Nissan should have been more aggressive with their styling earlier on with the second generation, uh, Titan in order to you know keep it standing out instead it was a truck that looked a lot like a Ford from certain angles which they got a lot of flack for and honestly yeah. had they made it look more like the brand new Frontier looks right now I think that they would have saved some sales uh, and sales you know are not great in the first six months of 2023 they sold 10,550 Titans which is yikes um, you know just over a thousand a month mm-hmm uh, you know, when GM combined full-size truck sales were over 400,000 and the Ford F-Series sold 382,000 um, F-Series trucks plus. So those are minute, minute numbers in comparison. And now, so what's about the future? What does ah. the future hold? So after the summer of 2024, they stopped production at the Canton, Mississippi plant. Nissan says that's part of their move towards electrification, right? Mm -hmm. They're going to rebuild, reconstruct that plant, uh, re-equip it for electrified vehicles. And they're going to build at least two of them at that factory. Wow. Okay. So what could that mean? Is the Titan name going to come back as something else two, three, four years from now? It's entirely possible. Now, we want to add a caveat to this. Now, some of you might be saying, well, wait a minute, if they're getting rid of the Titan, what about the Armada and what about the Infiniti QX80? Mm, what about it? it? 
Well, those are actually being built in Japan right now, and yes. there have been no announcements about those things going away. Not only that, but the QX80 is actually a fairly good seller for Infinity that doesn't have very many good sellers. Exactly. So I think the SUVs are still still here to stay. Right. But they've been talking about the electrification with you know literal uh, little electric pickup concept. Remember from been a hearing, couple years ago? Mm -hmm. At the surf out, I think it was called. Yeah. So maybe that name will come back. You know, they've been toying with the hard body name coming back. Yeah. Also, so who knows? We might see the Titan again several years from now. But the most important thing right now is that Nissan does renew, use their old names. They are known for doing that. So perhaps we'll see the Titan name come back in some way in the future. Yes, and we want to hear your stories as well. So if you have uh, most of the, actually Titan owners send us very positive stories. Yeah, we've heard a lot. So let us know in the comments below or email us at ask at tfltruck.com with your Nissan Titan story. And um, if, any, if you include pictures, we can use it in our website post. Oh, certainly. Or on our community page. That sounds good. Good luck, guys, and farewell to the Nissan Titan. Woo.